Hi, welcome back to Anything is Possible. Glad to have you back. Um, this time I am going to cover the, all the other things in Mexico that um, are con would be considered utilities, uh, with the exception of possibly TV, which I don't know if you consider that a utility, but um, I, I am not a TV watcher and I haven't really been my whole life, so uh, I can't really answer any questions on that. Um, maybe somebody can put something in the comments about uh, television. I do have a smart TV, but I watch everything just basically on the Internet. First, I'm going to talk about gas. Um, there is no piped gas to homes. Yeah, if you've ever lived outside of a city area, out in a rural areas, you have a propane tank. And I've lived in many areas in the U.S. where I had a propane tank that I had to get filled every now and then. And that's pretty much how all the houses here are. Um, they come in various sizes. And some of them are just the small cylinders um, that a truck, you can call a truck, and they'll come and just swap out cylinders. But most houses these days have a larger tank. And uh, you call a propane tanker truck and it comes in it and it refills your tank for you. Mine happens to be really near the front gate and it's easy to fill. Uh, a lot of others are up on the roof and some of them are actually in really amazingly um, difficult uh, locations. I'm not exactly sure how they get to some of these. Propane burns a lot hotter quite a bit hotter than uh, natural gas. So um, when you're cooking on a gas stove, um, it'll cook a lot faster than it would on a regular uh, natural gas stove. And of course appliances um, have to be made specifically to handle propane rather than natural gas. Uh, the oven, at least that I've got, and I understand this is fairly common, uh, with Mexican stoves doesn't have any kind of temperature indication on the dial. So when you're baking, um, mine actually has numbers one through five and I looked up online for that particular brand of stove and it tells you what centigrade um, or Celsius, whatever you call it now. It's more or less correlated with those numbers but um, I believe that it isn't nearly as fine-tuned as an American stove where you're used to putting it at a certain temperature and having it stay pretty, pretty much regulated at that temperature. And so my particular stove, uh, it's like a three. I've finally figured out after baking a few things is about equal to 350 Fahrenheit. So most of the things that I bake these days, cakes or... Um, dog cookies or roasting a chicken. I just set it at at three and it pretty much does a good job. You have to monitor your gas tank pretty closely. If you've ever lived with a propane tank, you know they they do run out and it's just gone. You know, you're without gas once that tank is empty. I have to tell you, if it goes down too quickly, you might want to keep an eye on it because the first... Um, tank that I got filled, I moved in and the tank was completely empty. I mean, completely empty. So I called the gas guy and they, they came in and filled it up and it only lasted, lasted less than a month. And I wasn't using that much. I thought, boy, I'm going to really have to watch my gas usage. So I got it filled up again and watched the gauge and it was going down without my ever even using anything. So that's when we started investigating and found out there was a massive leak underneath the tile floor in the kitchen. And this is not uncommon. Um, these lines get old and they decay. And um, I, I have several neighbors and friends that um, had a similar problem with gas, the gas just going down too quickly and finding out that there was a leak. So luckily I have a really responsive landlord and and he, um, after a few weeks of experimenting, shutting it off at the tank, shutting it off, you know, various things and um, me not using the gas at all, um, uh, we found out that yes, it was a leak and 
he agreed to replace the entire gas line from the tank through the house and unfortunately that involved tearing up the tile floor in the kitchen um, from the wall to the, to the island where the stove is and sure enough after they'd replaced all of the line and they took up that tile the, the earth underneath that tile floor was saturated with gas it just stunk so bad so they dug out that dirt and disposed of it um, and refilled it and replaced the line and put the tile back in but it was um, a couple of days of work um, to do all that and I think about the times that I ran the oven and it was <laughs> the oven is like just a few inches away from where the leak was if it looks like your gas tank is going down needlessly quickly um, you should have someone a plumber that specializes in gas come out and and try and identify if there's a leak somewhere sometimes it's just in a connection to an appliance and that's pretty easy to fix but this required replacement of the entire gas line gas water heaters are pretty common here and they actually call them boilers um, they are basically just the same as any water heater anywhere else except they run on propane and rather than keep the water hot 24 7 people generally here leave them shut off um, I shut mine off at the wall and shut off the tank basically you know I plan ahead I it's like I go okay I don't take a shower every single day <laughs> um, it's not that hot and I'm not you know doing a lot of super sweaty active things so um, every couple of days I turn the burner on and heat up a tank of water and then I take my shower and shut off the tank and then the tank is usually full of hot water at that point and that is when I do a sink full of dishes um, other than that if I need hot water rather than heat up the whole water heater full of water um, hot water I just uh, if I want to do some dishes I just heat up a big pan of water my little induction cooktop do my dishes that way uh, sewer um, I gotta say uh, I don't think there's no place that I know of, although cities may be different um, there aren't any sewer lines here so I have a composter um, that is in the front yard it's a, a tank that digests the waste black water and gray water from the house and any any sewage and it it pretty much takes care of itself it's it's like a septic tank only it doesn't le have a leach field it's just a a composting tank out in the front yard um, the only thing you have to watch out if you have one of these types of systems and even otherwise that you make sure that you either buy toilet paper that dissolves like almost instantly or you just throw your toilet tissue in the trash rather than um, flushing it um, an easy way to do that find out what kind you've got and, and once you find one stick with that brand um, you can just put it in a jar of water and shake it a bit and if it disintegrates into you know basically nothing um, mush right away I mean it should be almost instantaneous that it dissolves into nothing um, then you know that it's safe to put down your toilet now the next thing I wanted to talk about was trash pickup and that's one thing I really like here is that um, they pick up trash in my neighborhood three times a week and where I used to live I think it was daily I think it might possibly be because this is tends to be a warm environment and warm climate and um, they don't want a lot of stinky trash around that will attract flies and rats and varmints <laughs> so um, I a lot of people put their trash bags out on the curb uh, mine picked up in the afternoons uh, usually late morning early afternoon so I get it out there you know by eight o'clock in the morning and uh, if it's a trash bag and you put it out at night there's a good chance dogs of roaming around will come and rip it open and so I got a little 
mini trash can. I just put my trash in that and with a lid and completely stopped the dogs bothering it. Trash is paid for through the um, property taxes. Um, there is essentially no postal system here at all. Um, I, I've never seen a postal truck and there's no post boxes, um, no regular mail delivery. Um, I guess at, somehow mail occasionally gets delivered but um, like I mentioned in the last video, the way I get my water bill, it's just somebody comes and tucks a piece of paper underneath my gate and uh, it has, that's my water bill. <laughs> it's not even in an envelope. And then uh, my ballot, actually, I was surprised from the U.S. This guy drives up to my gate um, on a motorcycle and um, I happen to be walking up to the gate at that time and and he asked if my you know what my name was and I said yeah it's me and and he handed me my ballot it wasn't like an official postal truck or anything it was just a a guy driving around with this bag of, of obviously it was other people's ballots distributing them to the addresses that was on the ballot so I I <laughs> check so you're sure how that got coordinated but it got here anyway so a lot of houses they actually have a mail slot in the gate my house doesn't and there's like an enclosed mailbox they're labeled with either buzon which means mailbox or correo which is mail um, and you know don't expect a lot of people to be sending you Christmas cards <laughs> it's just not gonna happen here I tell people you know send me something online you know you're just gonna have to email me your in terms of ordering merchandise um, it's pretty tricky too um, the best way to do that is through uh, to, to coordinate with a local shipping store um, and there is like UPS store apparently here I, I haven't looked that up but there is a place called I shop and mail and they handle deliveries from pretty much anything um, and they will ship for you. Uh, the way that works I understand is that there you ha they have a address in Laredo, Texas and you have the things shipped there to their warehouse and you can have either a designated um, address of your own or you can use a general one that they have for if you're only going to use it once in a long time you have things shipped there then they uh, will truck it down here and they'll have it at the store and they'll let you know when it's in. So if you want to shop through a catalog in the United States, rather than attempting to have it shipped directly to you here, have it arranged with your local shipping store um, and I'm sure it'll work out much quicker. I had something that I ordered online and I didn't know where it was coming from but it turns out it actually was coming all the way from China and oh my gosh it took it over two months to get here. It was hung up in customs and uh, it did come and, and get delivered but it was a long long time and I think if I had had it shipped through the local shipping store it would have come a lot quicker. Uh, since I moved, um, I am actually having um, anything that's addressed to me forwarded to a company that I happen to use as mailbox forwarding. Um, there's a lot of these companies that do this. Basically get an address, mine is in Michigan, like a P.O. box. All of my mail gets forwarded to that and they scan the outside of the envelope and I take a look at it online I get an email when there's something there and I take a look at it and if it looks like something important then I can ask them to actually open it up and scan the contents and I will look at the contents and decide you know you can either download it and just keep it for your records or if it's just something you don't care about you can ask them just to shred it um, and the stuff that doesn't look important from that envelope, you can just have them just shred. The other thing that they will do for you is, and I've had this happen, is that I've had checks sent to me. 
and they will open up the envelope and if it's a check then they will actually deposit the check for you they don't keep any of your banking information on file but you specify that when you want them to do a deposit give them the bank and give them the banking number routing number and all that they will actually mail that check to your financial institution for a deposit and there is a, there is a charge for that but it's not that much it's important when you move to make sure that people know what your for your new address is um, or your your new mailbox forwarding address um, and financial institutions won't deal with that so um, I'm actually using my sister's address uh, for all of my fan financial institutions they need to have a US address for tax purposes so oh, so the cost of the mailbox forwarding at least the the plan I've got is fifteen dollars a month and I probably won't keep that going indefinitely um, obviously the USPS won't be forwarding things forever I think they forward for a year and you actually can extend that but um, that's enough for me to catch the majority of what mail is being sent to my old address and get that corrected so now there are um, online shopping companies that deliver directly quite reliably here in Mexico and they are based here in Mexico so there is Amazon Mexico which is similar to Amazon in the United States but um, it actually resides here in Mexico and there's another company called Mercado Libre uh, it's very similar to Amazon it has some very nice products clothes has just a huge variety of products and then Petco in Mexico actually if you want pet supplies and have a hard time finding what you need locally you can order from Petco and all of these come directly to your house you don't have to go through iShop and mail because they're companies here in Mexico but since there's no way for them to uh, you know deliver something if you're not home what they do is lob it over your fence and a lot of the times I'm here so they just ring the doorbell and you go out and typically I give them 20 peso tip just because these guys don't make very much money and um, so they it's nice to give them a little tip 20 pesos is like a, a dollar so phones these days I don't know anybody that has a landline but these days everybody uses cell phones I got um, Telcel which is seems to work just fine I picked up my first sim card at my local OXO and uh, it came with I think it was 10 days that came with it and then you can just reload it uh, from an app on your phone for Telcel it's called me Telcel and you can reload your app with as much as you want anytime also came with music and I'm pretty happy with that you can find all kinds of different music to play on your phone the the basic Telcel plan without any limits on text text or data for 26 days is 150 pesos or seven dollars and fifty cents um, so that's pretty good and you can have calling to the US or Canada it's all included and currently Telcel is operating at 4G also I haven't used it but AT&T apparently works seamlessly across the United States and Mexico and you can keep your US phone number if you want um, apparently also Verizon and T-Mobile uh, works just fine um, and you can keep your US number I had Google Fi which I was very happy with and it said that it worked in Mexico and it did it worked great got me down here and then after three months they told me that they were discontinuing it because they're not set up uh, there must be some agreement with the usage of the the cell phone towers or something down here but they said that after three months they wouldn't support uh, Google Fi in terms of using the cell phone towers it still works fine with with Wi-Fi so when I'm in a coffee shop and I can get the password for the Wi-Fi or I'm at home and I use the Wi-Fi 
uh, there, um, I can still use my Google Fi. And so rather than pay for the expensive plan, um, since I'm not able to use, take advantage of it, I drop down to their cheapest plan, which is 20 bucks a month. And I just went with that. And so my phone actually takes two SIM cards. So I have one SIM that is the Google Fi number. And so people from home can call me on that number still and use it for bank verification, which is required for my personal financial institutions. They, when you log in, they send you, uh, text you a number to verify who you are. Um, it goes to my old Google Fi number, um, which is a US number, and it, it works just fine. Other than that, I use my Mexican number for all talk, text, data, and uh, WhatsApp, which is a big deal down here. That is the way most people communicate down here. Uh, rather than uh, Messenger, they use WhatsApp, and that's using your phone number. I just wanted to touch a little bit about internet. Internet here is actually excellent. I mean, it's sort of like cell phone service. I mean, I cannot complain at all about those. They are amazingly high tech. Uh, I was able to get fiber optic. It's pretty much ubiquitous here. It's everywhere. Um, you just have to call up and, and uh, they will string a line as long as you're not too far out in the middle of nowhere. Um, they'll string a line to your house and, and you get high-speed internet, um, and which is amazing because in my southern Oregon home, I had just barely gotten it like two months before I moved out. They were finally getting fiber optic, uh, and I was living near a town, but they were just barely beginning it, and here it had been in Mexico for, you know, uh, quite a long time, I believe. <laughs> so I was really pleasantly surprised because I, I use internet a lot. It is very inexpensive. Um, basically, it's $38 a month um, for unlimited data. Uh, you can do anything, and so that includes streaming of movies and all of my uploads and downloads. All covered, $38 a month, which is, I guess it's about half what I was paying for my fiber optic in Southern Oregon. The, the big expense is gas. Um, so watch your gas usage. Like I pointed out in my last video, I, I use a little induction cooktop, which uses electricity rather than gas for cooking. So I don't use my, my stove top really, virtually not at all. To fill my little gas tank, I have to look back, but I think it was about the equivalent of about eighty dollars, so you know it's, that's the priciest util, most pricey utility that there is, really. Uh, and I, so I just watch it. You know, I just don't use a whole lot of gas. I dry my clothes on the line because I have a gas clothes dryer, and uh, I just make sure that I, I minimize the gas use. So I hope that kind of gives you a clue as to how utilities are between this and my last video on electricity and water. If you have any questions or uh, want to get put some input into how, how it is in your area of Mexico, if you live down here, uh, I'd be love to have your input because I only have my experience in my little area and things could be really different if you're living in Guadalajara, Mexico City, or, you know, some other area. Um, could be that things are, you know, a whole lot different than they are here. But I'm just letting people know what my experience is and, um, you know, how it is to live down here. And it's, it's really not a, not a hardship at all. It's just diff. Have a great week. A happy Thanksgiving. And I will be seeing you in a week and a half or so. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.